we start by thinking about the rise of platforms. And this is mainly, I'd say, a rise of platforms in the media. It's an extremely interesting phenomenon to be watching. But if we look at the statistics of labor platforms, so platforms purveying tasks of some sort, uh, we see that it's actually a very small proportion of the population that are getting work this way. Uh, there was a study carried out by the uh, Foundation of European Progressive Studies that did a comparative study of different European countries that showed that in Sweden 12% of uh, the labor force has worked on platforms and the same thing in the Netherlands. Now, we co-financed that study and there are some problems with it because it also includes platforms that post jobs instead of tasks. So one would hardly make the case that Monster.com is a labor platform, or even though it sort of is. But if we think about the platforms we are actually reading about in the news, it's something quite different. So 1% to 2% in Sweden have worked towards one of these platforms in some way, uh, and it seems very few of them do it as a full-time income. It's mainly a supplementary income. So why are we paying so much attention to this question? We have 640,000 members in Sweden. I think about 560,000 are uh, in normal jobs, 10,000 are self-employed, and then we have students and pensioners. So we have different kinds of membership for different type of groups. But the reason we think this is a big deal is that we see the labor platform as a type of organizational innovation. Uh, and as I was doing my work for, or leading up to that, my work for the Digitalization Commission in Sweden, uh, I mean, I was very, like most here, I think, by Eric Bernielsen and Andrew McAfee's book, The Second Machine Age. Uh, and I think their when they talked about the introduction of, especially the electric engine, like it, at first it just replaced the steam engine and it had the same type of operation in the factory. But then you had a couple of decades, people were getting used to technology. Henry Ford and Frederick Taylor, you know, sort of invented the new way of organizing work in the second industrial revolution. So when I try to make the connection with, and they do it as well in their new book, uh, Machine Platform Crowd, uh, it's that the platform is a type of tool which is a new way of organizing work, right? And it's built on technology, in our phones mainly, I'd say, that could probably be the big future, uh, that wasn't available to us just 10, 15 years ago or actually almost uh, exactly 10 years ago, I think the iPhone is the big icebreaker here. So, I mean, why is this a big deal? Well, first of all, we are going to talk about Uber here, I'm sure, because it's very important. Everyone gets bored of Uber, but Uber is important because everyone is watching Uber. Uber is, you know, the archetype of a labor platform. It's an extremely successful business model if you think about number of users and how it's gone from a, a very small startup in the Bay Area to the world's largest taxi company in a very short period of time. So it's an incredibly scalable operation. But it also shows that you can coordinate a decentralized workforce through the use of an algorithm. And this is where, in our view, it gets quite big. And it's an easily imitatable type of business model. I'm not going to say it's easy, I can't program an app myself, but many other firms are trying to become the Uber of market X or Y or Z. So uh, what we're seeing is this, is maybe today, even though it's a small share of the population, this type of thinking of using algorithms in order to automate certain aspects of being an employer or a free market maybe that is a huge innovation, because that enables the workforce to become more and more decentralized. And as a trade union, we're in trouble here, because <laughs> our model of organizing work, especially around times when collective agreements are running out of time and there might be time to call a strike or something, or threatening to call a strike, as we do in Sweden, and rarely resulting in a strike, uh, we, we are built up around the workplace. We are built up around the coffee or fika table, as we say in Sweden. We have our discussions there, and then we get angry, and, but not so angry. We get angry in order to reach a compromise. Um, but above that, the platform, I think, in, we're in early incarnation right now with this, but who's to say in 5, 10 to 15 years that platforms aren't just a normal way of doing business? because the platform is built up of algorithms. Algorithms are just mathematical instructions for the computer to follow, it follows it every time. What if some aspects of being an employer can be automated this way? And uh, the way that platforms are built today, these are black boxes, right? And this is what we get into today. And it's in our interest that these algorithms follow the collective agreements. That's our prime concern here. 
If a platform is built to follow the collective agreement in the relevant market on the Swedish labor market, and does so 100% of the time, we might actually get better compliance to the rules that we have negotiated with the employers. Because today, these are legal contracts, really hard to distinguish. And Union has, I think, close to 100 collective agreements, I think, in anything ranging from professional ice hockey players to IT professionals to call center uh, people. They all, they're all very different. But if we go back a little bit to the Uber example, I think, and what we're saying is platforms are being used to bypass in traditional institutions. And this is the big issue that we are going to have to face. We have a set of rules that we own together with the employers, which are our collective agreements that are re-signed every so many years. How can we make it easier for these firms to incorporate the collective agreements into their algorithms? That's our first step. That's our primary objective in this, I'd say. But then, uh, working on the Digitalization Commission, the issue of how can government agencies in Sweden digitalize more efficiently? So the Swedish tax agency is an agency that has been incredibly successful in this process. Because what they did was they thought, how can, well, it started out with how can we uh, use IT smarter to collect taxes, but then they had a really entrepreneurial guy there. Uh, who said, no, how can we use IT to make it easier for people to pay taxes and maybe enjoy paying their taxes a little bit more? So the, I, I was really inspired by this approach. We, if we want rules to actually be easy to follow, we are going to have to use the tools available to us in order to make that happen. But what I'm saying is, in the Uber case, they are in trouble all over the world because they go in and they don't ask for permission, they ask for forgiveness. So what happens if platforms come to more and more markets? We're going to have more and more of these extremely time-consuming and annoying debates about whether you should follow the rules or not, just because you call yourself a sharing platform. I think it's in society's interest to have a type of neutrality of competition. If you have a platform and follow the rules and all your competitors are knocked away, then maybe that's fair. But if you do so by skipping out on regulations and institutions in the society, choosing which rules to pick or not, then we don't have a sustainable situation here. It could actually get quite messy. So what we're thinking, and the work in the, gov in the, in the digitalization commission was quite complicated by the fact that how do we make more agencies do this good journey that the tax authority did? Because there are so many failed examples for that one successful example. Um, I mean, they, they're the fourth or fifth most popular government agency in Sweden. <laughs> they didn't used to be. It's very easy to do your taxes in Sweden, by the way. It took me two minutes on the phone or something. Uh, but the issue is we have, so platform firms will meet regulations in a variety of areas. So for instance then, taxameters, that's a government, uh, well it's actually, it's, it's a government agency, so it's, which is the Board of Transportation that decides this is what a taxameter looks like, this is how it works, this is to make sure you don't cheat and pay your taxes. But Uber CEO in Sweden said Uber could be a taxameter in the app, and I totally agree with him. It could be, but it's not up to Uber to choose how that works. So what you have to do is you have to create, you have to digitalize the, innovate, the, the, the regulation which is the taxameter computer and make it into an API so, or a code of some kind. And we might have to do this in more areas. So I will leave you with like our, our grand proposal, but that means because Sweden has such as, you know, the labor unions are very strong, we have 70% union coverage, we have a tradition of solving bigger issues in the labor market that are normally up to legislators in other countries. Perhaps us, the platforms and the unions, can take a more active role in digitalizing rules that are outside the collective bargaining regime, doing that together with agencies. So what we have to think about, I, if we want platforms to play by the rules, we have to make the rules more easily available to them. So lower the transaction costs to be good platforms. Thank you. So thanks, Frederick. Um, different sector, uh, the organization of labor. And I think what I, what I heard in your talk, what, what I found really interesting is you said us platforms, although even few people use them today, uh, they might be a new model for the organization of labor uh, in which uh, platforms coordinate a decentralized workforce through algorithms. Right, where basically then in the end we might all become freelancers organized through these platforms, but these platforms are the strong central force that organize that labor. And then of course the question as you posed is, but then who will represent 
um, all those freelancers and how can we make sure that uh, though the way the platforms organize labor is really up to the standards that we as a democracy uh, want for our for our labor practices and I've, i you know one really interesting uh, angle that you gave i think was was the example of uber uh, where you say okay then let's let's switch the logic around and where we as a as a government say this is what we think that uh, a taxonometer should look like, um, and this is the code, and you have to implement that in your platform rather than, than the other way around. 